Yeah. Let's see if I can figure out what we're on here. Oh, she's got it. So I can disconnect this thing. That's this one, right?
Our vision is that each of us is a minister seeking to know Christ, to grow in discipleship, and to embody God's love for the world. It is a good thing that we can be the church together today because we are baptizing infants. And there is nothing better than to baptize a baby. And I just say that from many years of experience. I want to welcome all of you, but I want to welcome in particular uh, Trevor and Connor's family today that is gathered with us. And by family, I mean family, extended friends. It's all the same. We are delighted that you are here with us. Um, and we're especially delighted uh, that uh, Kristen and Tim are back amongst us. There were many here that remember them as small children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, can I ask uh, Kristen and Tim if you would just um, give us a hint about who's here with us today? part of this celebration, and that will indeed happen a little bit later in our service. Um, we do have a couple of announcements. Uh, Lee, did you want to make a couple of announcements? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to say welcome to all the moms and sorry to bring the kids when you were kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, last night was our, our, I don't know how many we were doing, our grace for dinner when we served. 200 people. Well, we had 200 that wanted to, uh, that was called in, but due to the weather, we had to serve 180 meals. Yeah. And volunteers got to take some home, too. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. So it's, it's impressive that we're still building that many that many people on a monthly basis. Obviously, there's a great deal of need in our communities. Also, um, Charleston Place is having a bummer sale on April 27th, 8th, and 28th and 29th. These flyers out, outside, they're kind of back up together. Tell us about our next, actually, actually our next race for dinner, the meal's going to be provided by Jenny's Pizzeria. So if you don't have any of these, please take a flyer and hand it out. Thank you. Uh, this is an opportunity that you can come and serve as well. We always uh, need volunteers on the day of service to help us package the food and get it out to the folks at, um, as they come by. Yeah, as so, the, as the river, it was quite a challenge for me yesterday to be out in all that pouring rain. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, and we are especially thankful when our folks have to work in, in some question of weather. Absolutely. We are having our last in our Lenten series of Bible book study uh, this afternoon uh, after the festivities and stuff that will gather in uh, the other building for that where you do not have to have read the chapters, you can just come and be part of the conversation. We promise we'll share what you need to know and uh, we're happy to have um, folks join us. And let's start time today to 11 11.15 start time. 11.15 start time. Thank you very much. Any other announcements? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, we're doing a fundraiser. Here on June 3rd, is that right, Amy? June 3rd, is that right, Amy? From June. Well, yeah, it's, it's actually going to start at 4, but we need to come at 3. We're probably going to do it outside so you can have a picnic. Uh, Ty <laughs> Stevens is going to sing again. I kind of have the, the, the Decker brothers who are playing back up, and there's, I'm working on getting this incredible singer from New York, a young woman named Sadie. Uh, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be a good show. <laughs> so please come out and it's the yeah. benefit the wellness center and our and benefit our outreach division and uh, it's also causing a benefit to come part of race for day. So our outreach team will decide on that, but it's gonna benefit some very good causes. And just bring friends, bring as many friends. We gotta fill up the lawn. We gotta get rid of the deer. And everything's a donation. <laughs> it's, all, yeah, it's all based on it's all donations. based on donations. So thank you. June third. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Please go move the bulletin with me. And anytime you see anything in bold, please be welcome to respond together. Call to worship. Risen Lord Jesus, 
As the rising sun scatters the darkness, let the fear and the memory of failure be scattered from our souls, that we may live in the glorious freedom of the children of God. Risen, Lord Jesus, let us baptize by your resurrection might, that we trust in you above all else, hope in you above all else, see you in all things, find you in every place, meet you among all people, know you through the journey of life and faith. Please, together, open in prayer. Holy One, on this Easter time morning, we come to you singing hallelujahs, celebrating new life all around us, not quite believing at all, but going along with it for the time being. We are the richest people, Holy One, doubters, saints, sinners, questioners, spiritual and religious, who skip, run, and stumble on the journey. We pray that whoever we are in this journey, that you might open our eyes and ears to do all, to be your love wherever we are. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join in the hymn of 235, O Sons and Daughters, let us sing.
God's love. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we confess that times we have shared empty praises and gratitude to assure ourselves when others have struggled and suffered. We have tried to force our grateful response instead of sitting with the questions and doubts. Forgive us for putting our feelings upon another's struggles. We also confess at times others have done the same to us, and we acknowledge the pain and hurt we have felt. We confess boldly that doubt is not the opposite of faith, and that there is no shame in holding a doubt and sharing our struggles. We ask instead, O oh God, for the wisdom to help one another on the journey of faith. We ask for the strength to sit with questions. We ask for the courage to listen without judgment. We ask, O oh God, for your courage to listen to for help. For his love that sees us through our struggles and faith. Amen. <clears throat> Words of assurance. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Blessed are you on the journey of faith and doubt. Blessed are you when you love one another and pray for one another and encourage one another. Blessed are you when you allow others to pray for you, comfort you, and assure you. Blessed are when you when you forgive one another. Blessed are you when you share the good news to the world. Amen. Please stand and join in hymn 434. Restore us, O oh God. Perishable, 
is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with his indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I think Zoe had it. We could have read a story. Okay. Can everybody hear us okay? Yeah. Should I use the mic for the Zoom people? Yeah, that's okay. Um, so, today, it, uh, later on, I'll tell you uh, how I made these out for them. Grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not whole take too much time. Right so right now we just want to. This is my friend Zoe. Zoe. Hi Zoe. This Hi. is. Oh, I'm just going to introduce the babies right now. This is baby Trevor, and his Hi. mom is Christy, and his dad is Derek. That's baby Connor, yep. and his his dad is Tim, and his mom is Emma. The wife has fallen the bulletin for my missy. Is that true? Thank you. But your, your, um, that's that's your, name. Name. your maiden name is Emma? I mean, yeah. Lizzie? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I asked to tell you if her niece's name was Peyton Peyton. I get confused again. Anyway, so today, this is a, a big thing because we're all in this together. So the name of the book we're going to read is called Baptism Promises. So I'm going to read the words, and then Zoe's going to show you a picture. So open to the first page of the board. I'm not going to read the whole entire book, but we'll read most of it. And, and Connor and Trevor, each going to get one of these to take home. <laughs> Your baptism is a very special day. Okay, get up. Show the picture all around right to the Zoom people. Walk in a circle, slowly. <laughs> show it to the pastor and to the Behind us over here. <laughs> okay, turn the page, please. <laughs> On this special day, our family said, We want you to be baptized. We promise that we will try to live as Jesus taught. We will teach you to live this way too. Get shows, please. <laughs> Everybody in the church, here we all are, says, We promise to help you. We will teach you Bible stories and show you how to live as Jesus taught. We promise to love and pray for you and your family. Pictures, please. I think the boys like the story. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone smile. Okay, this is this is a um, spoiler alert. Everyone's going to smile <laughs> when the pastor puts water on their little heads <laughs> and says, "I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit." Amen. Um, okay. Give it one more page, and then. Okay, turn the next page, and then. Um, I think we'll just leave it at that. So this is um, when I finish reading, I'll read this sentence and this sentence, and together you and I will read that sentence, okay? Now, everyone knows that you are a child of God. God promises to always, always love you. And we do too. Pictures, please. Uh, we'll save the prayers for later. Normally, Zoe and I do a little prayer, but we'll just leave it at that and to be continued. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you. Thank you.
So our gospel lesson this morning is from the Gospel of John. And I need to remind you that last week we told you the Easter story from the Gospel of Matthew. And the women left the tomb uh, fearful and rejoicing to tell the disciples that they should be with Jesus in Galilee. But in the Gospel of John, though some of the women had gone with Mary and discovered the tomb empty, and when the disciples came and also discovered the tomb empty, they all went away, and Jesus appeared first to Mary, Mary Magdalene. So the disciples have yet to see Jesus. They just have heard the word that he has been raised and that the tomb is empty. And this is how the story continues in John on that first Easter morning. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. So a week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we thank you for these Easter stories, for the many and various ways that it is told and retold among us, so that we might believe. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you gotta love Thomas, right? Thomas is the one who says what everybody's thinking, and in fact, often does what's most needed at the moment. Now, we know him, Thomas the Doubter, but I'd like to suggest to you today that we would be better off calling him Thomas the Questioner, or Thomas the Needy One, or even Thomas the Courageous One. We all know this story. After Jesus, the news of Jesus being raised, the disciples have gathered in the upper room because they are still fearful of what might happen. Christianity has not yet come to be a faith that's accepted around the world. It's a movement. It's a rebellion in some ways against the religious stories and the political authorities. And they are still fearful of what might happen, that what might happen to them as it happened to Jesus. So they're hiding, even though they have a hint that something extraordinary has taken place. 
Last week we talked about it being a surprise. Even though Jesus had told them several times that he would have to suffer and die and be raised on the third day, they were still grieving and confused and lost when they received the news that he's been raised. And though no one has seen him yet, they are starting to feel hopeful. Something stirring within them. And while they are in the upper room, Jesus comes to them, and his first words are peace. He speaks peace to a group of friends who fled when he needed them most, who betrayed and denied him. And he shows them what they need to see so that they know he is real and what they have been talking about, what has been promised has come to bear, has come true. But Thomas is not there. Now, we don't know why Thomas is not there. Maybe he was too fearful to come. Maybe he was off getting food for the day and just hadn't gotten back in time before the doors were locked. Maybe he was still on the streets trying to make his way there without anybody seeing. We don't know why Thomas wasn't in the room. But he wasn't there, and he didn't experience what all the other disciples had experienced. What Thomas longs for is not more, but the same as what the other disciples had. He wanted to see Jesus alive. He wanted to know that it was true, and that all that Jesus had said would become reality. So the next week, he makes sure he's there. You know, he's probably the first one there. He just hopes that Jesus will come out of them again. And Jesus does, because Jesus knows what Thomas needs. Thomas needs to see and touch him. And when he does, Thomas says, my Lord and my God, he makes this wonderful confession. We don't even know that he had to actually touch him. He just had to know that it was Jesus and that he was alive. You see, in my book, doubts are the other side of faith. Not opposite of faith, but part of faith. If you're a doubter, it's because you have questions and you're longing for answers. You're longing for the relationship with God that perhaps others have so easily. Martin Marty refers to these souls as winter souls. They're always caught in the kind of waiting and wondering and longing and looking for God. And not without reason. Oftentimes, there are people who have had experienced losses or broken relationships or perhaps have been overwhelmed by the horrors in our world, the poverty and the violence. And they wonder where God is and they need some proof that God is still active and alive and working in the world. The others, we'd be better called questioners, or seekers, or strugglers, or just Christians on a journey, wondering where they're going, how they're going to get there, not sure about the signs, sometimes longing for clarity or something to touch and feel to make it real. As we come to baptism today, I want to remind you that Trevor and Connor are beginning this journey of faith. And there will be days when believing is easy, when spring is all around us and new life and squirrels catch their attention. <laughs> when puppies lick their face, they will know that the Creator is a loving, and giving and wondrous God. But there will also be times when they doubt or question their faith. When things don't go as planned, when life around them seems to be difficult, 
when ones they love die. When the world seems to be coming undone at the seams, they'll wonder where is God and God's love for people and why is it so hard? And what will they do on those occasions? My hope is they'll come to the church. My hope is they'll return to this group of people here who loves them and cares for them and believes for them. You see, when children are baptized, there are a couple of things that happen. And I know this for sure, not just because I've done a few of these baptisms, not just because these stories tell us so, but because I've seen how faith works in people and in communities to show the love of God and the creative power of God to get people through those hard times. What happens this morning is first and foremost, we acknowledge that God loves these two children even before they know it. God loves all of us even before we can realize it or name it or sometimes even when we want to dispute it. The other thing that happens is you are washed in the waters of baptism, life-giving waters. And in that moment, we are reminding you that there are going to be times when you fall short and make mistakes. And like washing the dirt off your hands, you will need to be washed clean by confession and repentance and all of those things that we do in church. One of the other things that's important to me for baptism and for all of us in baptism is that when we baptize them, they become part of Jesus' family. They become part of the body we call the church. And the church will always be present for them wherever they go. The church will be a place where they can be affirmed and loved and encouraged. The church will be a place where they can ask questions, seek answers, sit for a moment in the mystery and sometimes the grief of being people of faith. The church is the body of believers. Not just this church, but the church universal, the church our ancestors long ago and our ancestors into the future. There will always be a family, an extended family, a family of faith for them. It is the church. So this morning, as we remember Thomas, the doubter, the questioner, the needy one, the courageous one, the faithful one, let us remember, too, our own baptisms bring us into that, that story. We, too, can struggle with the questions of faith. We, too, can have doubts. That doesn't make us further from God. That draws us closer to God. And we have this community that invites us to ask those questions to wrestle with the doubts and still be loved, and sometimes forgiven when needed, and oftentimes encouraged when possible. So my hope for Trevor and Connor and for all of us as we remember our baptism today is remember you are loved first and foremost by God always. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. No question, no doubt, no distance. Second, there is room for forgiveness and repentance and starting over in this community and in God's world. We see it all the time. And finally, you always have a place where you can come to be encouraged, to ask questions, to be healed, to be lifted up, to be prayed for, you always have a communion in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Friends, our hymn uh, is 
is number 482, baptized in water. Let us stand.
and then to uh, Kelly and Brad, Ed and Laura. Will you, by your prayers and your witness, help Trevor and Connor to grow into full stature of Christ? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Hi, y'all. Hello. That's Brad. <laughs> All right. Uh, two of the congregation will be speaking. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Trevor and Connor by word and deed with love and prayer? We do. Will you encourage them to know and follow Christ to be faithful members of this church? Well, through the sacrament of baptism, we enter a covenant that God has established in Jesus Christ. Within this covenant, God gives us a new life and strengthens us to resist evil and nurture his love. Through this covenant, we choose whom we'll serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. So to all of those here today, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Yes. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? We will. Well, <laughs> With the whole church, let us confess our faith, reciting the Apostles' Creed. I'm going to invite you to stand as we do that. I believe in God, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is my right to give our thanks and praise. And we give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth water and life. And in the time of Noah, you destroy all evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea and into the freedom of the promised land. And in the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ sets us free from sin and death and opens the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death, and from it we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over the water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sins of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life and graft them to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Trevor and Connor, that they may have the power to do your will, and to continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To give you all praise, honor, glory through Jesus Christ our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forevermore. Amen. Which one should we do first here? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, come on here. You, you go? Okay. 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 Okay.
Welcome, Trevor and Connor. You have been received into the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church through baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you have become members of the household of God to share with us in the ministry of Christ and the priesthood of all believers. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. church to share our joys and concerns with one another and then to make them our prayer when I say uh, oh wait I have the offer right over the offer thank you that's what he's tuning up for is the offer <laughs> friends we share uh, with others because God has given us so much and it's with thanksgiving that we offer ourselves, our time, our talent, and our resources as a token of thanksgiving for all that God has done for us. So let us bring our joys, or let's bring our offerings and tithes to God.
So we want to pray for Marie's dad as he continues in his with his health challenges, and we want to pray for Marie as she remembers the passing of her mom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Another day, my mother will be going for 11 months today. And I miss her a lot. I wish she could still be here with me. With my dad, my brother, myself. And I miss her a lot. Hi, my name is Amy, and I'd like to be saying prayers of thankfulness to our volunteers yesterday for Grace for Dinner and the people that are in need that are coming here for that. May they find the peace and comfort they need to find while they go through their challenging times. So I want to say that we're remembering uh, Debbie's mother today, and we're remembering the grief that that brings for Debbie. Lord, in your mercy. And then we want to say thanksgiving for our volunteers yesterday and pray for peace for the folks who uh, come seeking meals and uh, connection. Lord, in your mercy. I'm Nancy, and I forgot during the announcements to announce the Easter time fair. So I'm going to ask for God's help in filling in whatever plants we need. Um, it seems like we have a lot of volunteers, but not a lot, enough. But we need children to come, children of all ages, whether you're zero or a hundred or in between. 
um, just to have fun. It's between two and four next uh, Saturday, and just come and have, you know come and visit and have fun, Earth Day activities, and uh, just be with us and um, and just uh, ask for God's help in making the day fun and successful. So we want to uh, again thank God for the Easter season and for this time to celebrate with children of all ages. Lord, with thanksgiving. Yeah, hi, it's been just a prayer and joy for me, kind of a, a circle moment in that I Christy and Tim as uh, in Sunday school uh, many a year ago. So I'm, I'm uh, happy to be part of this moment. Too. So we are rejoicing today when children of the church bring their children to the church for baptism. Lord, in thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Our yes. I still let to pray for young sister Dr. Sue down in Washington. She's an old retired person. We're trying to get her to consider moving out of her own home and into a support care facility. She's in a very, 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 very difficult shape. And she answers the great right questions where we're not allowed to, the room is able to stay out. She's able to stay in her home and the option seems to be to let her really hurt herself before the government will allow her to do it. So we're going to hope and pray that we can figure out some way to get her to conceive the community and pray for support of what she has to say. So we want to pray today for young sister Sue, um, for her housing situation, and that whatever happened, it would be for her best and for her health and welfare. Lord, in your mercy. Anybody else? Anybody going on? Well, I want to say a thanksgiving for all the prayers as I traveled out to Chicago. My house was sold. I am now a resident of New Jersey. <laughs> Lord, with thanksgiving. Hear our prayers. Let us continue with prayer. Living God, we give you thanks for Jesus has risen that he comes to us with words of peace. Come to us today in government rooms where politicians meet, in city boards where executives plan, in courtrooms where lawyers are paid. Come with your words of peace. In hospital rooms where people are waiting, in prison cells where people are afraid, in homes where people struggle to make ends meet. Come with your words of peace. Come to us whenever we are afraid, whenever we are grieving, when we have questions not easily answered, when we doubt our faith in your reality. Come to us with your peace. We pray now for those we care for and worry about. And despite the strong and solid doors we lock, Protect, to protect ourselves and to shut out the world. Come to us with your words of peace. We give you thanks that we share in your death and resurrection through the sacrament of baptism, through the changing of the seasons, through the dying of old habits and sins, and the rising to a new way of life of forgiveness and love. We journey with all who seek you and your way, and especially today we celebrate the baptism of Trevor and Connie. We pray for them, for their parents, for their grandparents and godparents, for their aunts and uncles and friends, and for their church. That all might continue to know your love and feel your spirit. Breathe on us again so that you might overcome the evil and the wicked plots that fail, the cruelty of the world that comes to nothing, the betrayal and the dial of friends that do not prevail. Renew your power in us that we may open the doors and go out into the world to bring words of peace to the people we meet. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together and we invite you to pray using words that are familiar to you but we've also offered an inclusive language version in the world. So let us pray. Blessed one, our Father, Father and our Mother, holy is your name. May your love be enacted in the world. May your will be done on earth. 
earth as it is heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For all that you do in your love, for all that your love brings to birth, and for the fullness of your love that will be, now and forever. Amen. Friends, let us stand and sing our last hymn, number 233, Day of Resurrection.